the moon float like a balloon. You see, it's never too late and it's never too soon. Take it from me, it's I to be in living color. And how would you feel knowing prejudice was obsolete? And all mankind danced to the exact beat. And at night it was safe to walk down the street. In living color. <laughs> Yours or what's yours is mine. In living color. And how would you feel knowing everybody was your friend? From thin to thicker, through thicker, thin. And egotistical trips was put to an end. In living color. The moon float like a balloon. You see, it's never too late and it's never too soon. Take it from me, it's I to be in living color. And how would you feel knowing prejudice was obsolete? And all mankind danced to the exact beat. And at night it was safe to walk down the street. In living color. Welcome to In Living Color. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here tonight. We got a fun show lined up. As usual, I like to introduce the crew. Start with my DJ SW1. And my ladies, starting over here with Carrie, Michelle, Deidre, Lisa, Carrie Ann. So with no more delay, SW1, do the right thing. The Foundation for Black History Awareness is pleased to sponsor Great American Profiles. Tonight, King, The Early Years. Even in his earliest school days, young King seemed destined to become a leader. Hey, 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 that's mine. So? Wait a minute, why do you do that, boy? Because I wanted to, duty brain. You better shut up. Brothers, brothers, brothers! There's no way to settle things. There's nothing to be gained by fighting. Unless you get paid for it. Don, Don King, are you causing trouble again? No, Miss Patterson! And so, a young entrepreneur began what was to become his life's work, armed only with this one thought. I think I can make a buck doing this. This same philosophy led King to become a great innovator. Well, I, I don't have any money. Well, I'm sorry. Your yo-yo is not good enough. You're going to have to watch on pay-per-view. What's that? You have to look through the hole in the fence. <laughs> be fighting him no more okay i don't either king also became a great motivator okay hit my hand harder That's the man. Miss Lady Girl, may I walk, walk you home? 
Uh-uh. Why not? I just wanted to fight. But he got all the money and a vocabulary. <laughs> For you, young Miss Givens. Oh, thank you. A man of vision, a man of integrity, a man with a decent haircut. He was none of these things, but he got all the money. Only in America. Only in America. This has been Great American Profile. No Yankee man's bag. Plus, me have four perfectly good jobs left. Full job? Let me tell you something, young Rasta boy. When I was your age, I was a maintenance man, a carpenter, a cab driver, a cook, a hospital orderly, a security guard, a tour guide, a fish cleaner, and an Amway distributor all in the same day. I didn't even have time to almost make you, boy. But, Pop, me in tin bands now. We don't have even a little bit of time for myself now. Tin ban and full job. That's 14 things. <laughs> That's not as bad as I thought, boy. Come here, you chip off the old banana boat. Me proud of you, boy. <laughs> you hear that, you lazy layabout? My boy got 14 job. Hey, man. Hey, man. Well, well, well. If it ain't table napkin turn table clot. <laughs> What you doing home right now? Daddy, leave me alone. I have a date with my new boyfriend. What? Really now? Tell us about this new fella. Well, him name is Danny. Him American, him very funny, and I think I love he. <laughs> and what else? What do Daddy want to hear? Well, him very successful, you know. Him make over $100,000 a year. Mama gonna be rich. $100,000? How many jobs he got to make $100,000? Only one? He's a doctor. One job! <laughs> one job! The good deal, the boy with one job. I hear it. 
That's all you ever talk about, work, work, work. What about love? Look at the two of you, you're tired and you're bogged out all the time. Why don't you go and take a vacation? Oh, me on vacation now from 13 jobs. But Papa, how can I think about working when I am in love? It's just like when you and Mama just met, remember? I never love your mother. <laughs> I marry your mother because she had six jobs. What happened to that nice Korean boy you was dating? He had a hundred jobs. <laughs> him dead now. Him job dead at a job interview. Well, can this one hundred job opening? A hundred job opening? Someone get my newspaper. Don't <laughs> stop. I don't know why I tell you stupid people anything. I'm in it's love and that's the most important thing. You're supposed to be on my side anyway. Hey, Edwin, shut up in there. Is that a joke? Shut the hell up in there. Hey, man, don't nobody tell Gomez what he needs to be working in your own house. If I didn't have to go to work if I had a time I come, you'd be right now. Hey, man, don't nobody tell Gomez what he needs to be working in your own house. If I didn't have to go to work if I had a time I come, you'd be right right now. Oh, no, oh, my God, look at the time. Oh, hey, man. Join us again soon for Hey Man with the Headleys. You can't tell if they're happy or mad. <laughs> they're just working. Cue up the searchlight, promise to the center stage I grab the first mic Projecting the voice with this mic that I'm cuffing You ain't my knuckle, suck I'm snuffing The word of the third stands true, so no Frankly, Scarlet, I... Oh Hello, I'm Ted Turner And welcome to Ted Turner's Colorized Classics now, the colorization of these films may not agree with some people's artistic sensibilities. <laughs> but they're mine, and I can do anything I want with them. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Hell, I just found a way to add even more color. As you'll see in tonight's film, Casablanca. <laughs> Of all the job joints in the world, she had to bring a big butt into mine. I really loved her, you know. And why not? She's the only woman I ever met that looked as good as me. She's looking at you, my darling. Yo, Stevie, play it again. You must remember this. A kiss is just a kiss. A sign, yes, just a sign. That's all the time we have tonight. Join us next time for Citizen Kane starring Jimmy Walker. I think you'll agree. It's Dino Mike. I'm lucky enough to be Ted Turner. Good night. So look here, man. The Mercedes has to be back by midnight. So what are we gonna do? I don't know, man. I passed out all the fake business cards. We'll see what happens, man. Let's see what happens. But yo, man, I ain't taking a friend. Well, that's the way it's gotta be. You know I'm the one who always makes the first move, so you get stuck with the leftovers. Not this time, man. Why not? Yo, that girl ugly, man. <laughs> that's the best kind. What? I said the ugly one's the best kind, man. They don't ask for much. All you need is teeth and hair. That's all they want. <laughs> right, and if they leave you, you ain't pressed. You ain't thinking nothing about them, you know? Right. It's a pretty girl, see. They want all your money. That's right. Just like them boys say. Never trust a big butt when they smile. That's right. <laughs> I'm trying to give you poison. 
Access Television presents Men on Books. Hello, I'm Blaine Edwards. And I'm Antoine Merriweather. And welcome, welcome to, to Men, Men on, on Books. Books. The show that looks at great literature from the past and present. From a male point of view. <laughs> Tonight we have a new sponsor. Yes, and I'm Tickle Pink. <laughs> Brought to you by Wang. <laughs> Don't they make computers? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Our first classic is a book called Robinson Crusoe. It's all about a story of a white man who suddenly finds himself stranded on a desert island and how he forms a beautiful friendship with a virile yet submissive black man. <laughs> the author is Daniel Defoe. Now, if he's anything like that cute little Willem Dafoe, I'll be his Friday, Saturday answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our next book is Little Women. Hated it. <laughs> then, of course, there's Little Men. Hated it. <laughs> then we have Roughing it. It's a happy tale. <laughs> yes, it, this is a story about men romping through the wilderness at a time when our country was still open to exploration. <laughs> it was written by Samuel Longhorn Clemens, known to most people as Mark Twain. You know, if I ever had a son, I'd love to name him Longhorn. If you ever have a son, I'd grow all my hair back. <laughs> Oh, you gonna make me read you on public access. Don't get mad. Look, I know who I am. Do you? Come on, show me them little pearlies. Now, that's the twan I know. 
Now we're coming to the last book, which is truly my personal favorite. This one's called Moby Dick. <laughs> Open the portholes, there's a man overboard. <laughs> I get goose pimply just thinking about that big Mr. Moby. Uh, red light. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Moby is a whale. I bet he is. <laughs> this book gets the yet unheard of Zorro snap in Z formation. really got wrapped up in this story a man out on the open sea danger lurking around every corner and them all snuggled up in them tiny little cabins just made me want to hoist my sail and shove off with them <laughs> me too i paid top dollar just to be a stowaway in that store <laughs> oh ditto well that's our show for tonight yes join us next time when we'll be reviewing some of dickens <laughs> yes we'll be talking about the classic a tale of two cities I hope one of them is San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs>